Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and all you out there in the nation know how much I love dividend stocks. I've shared how much I make on dividend stocks each month, how to live off your dividends, and I know there are a lot of you out there with questions on dividend investing. So I'm putting together a complete series, Dividend Stocks for Beginners, answering all your biggest questions to get you started making money with these income investments. In this video, we'll start with the dividend basics every investor must know. What is a dividend and dividend yield? How do you calculate dividends? And when do you get paid? Make sure you join the community and look for that Dividend Stocks for Beginners playlist in the channel menu because I'm gonna be following this one up with all your questions on dividends and taxes and dividend strategies strategies you don't want to miss. Now, if you clicked through a dividend stocks video, I'm assuming you already know the power of dividend investing. This graphic shows how much of total stock market returns are from dividends in orange here versus the price gains in blue. Nearly half, 42% of the total return to stocks for investors comes from dividends. In decades with major stock market crashes like in 2000, dividends might be the only positive return you make, so investors without a dividend strategy could be missing out. And one of the most important things to understand about dividend stocks is just what it is. And bear with me because that is a lot more important than you might think. Now, a dividend is just a decision made by a company to return cash to its shareholders rather than keep that back to invest in the company's growth. So every few months, the board of directors is going to get together with management to forecast cash flow and, and determine how much the company needs to reinvest in its projects and expenses and how much excess cash there is that can be returned to shareholders. Now with this, the board makes that decision for how much cash to pay out and when. That's the dividend paid out per share of stock. And that's hugely important in a way that a lot of investors just don't realize. Now I'm going to show you step by step to how a dividend is paid out later, but, but it comes down to that decision by the company to return investor money rather than reinvest it. And this is why most of those fast growing tech companies don't pay dividends. Companies like Tesla growing sales at 70% a year and even older Amazon don't pay dividends because there are just so many growth projects to reinvest that money. Management has prioritized cash over that shareholder cash return. And this means two important things you need to remember about dividend stocks. First is just accept that the share price is probably not going to increase as fast as it might with other stocks. Your investors are taking some of their money now rather than letting the company reinvest it into the future and, and that's the trade-off you have to make. Also though, for many of the really high yield dividend stocks, the share price might even fall over time. This is one of the biggest problems in dividend investing. Investors chasing those stocks with dividends of 10 and 15% and, and then wondering why the share price falls. Now I'm going to show you what a good dividend yield looks like later, but remember, if a company is paying out that double digit dividend yield, that money has to come from somewhere and, and is probably going to destroy shareholder value over the long run. One of the most misunderstood parts of dividend investing is that dividend yield. So I want to take you through this with a few examples. Now the dividend yield is the dividend amount per share divided by the share price. It's a percentage return on the stock. For example, Apple pays a dividend of 92 cents a share on a stock price currently at $150 per share. So if we divide 92 cents by 150, we get a dividend yield of 0.0061 or 0.61% yield. And where the confusion comes in for a lot of investors is not understanding if this is a, a monthly return or quarterly or annual or what and, and how the changes in the price affect that yield. Nation, all dividend yields are shown on an annual basis. Anytime you see a dividend yield percentage, that's the percentage return you're going to earn over the next year if you invest at the current price. Now, most dividend stocks pay every three months. So when you see that percentage, so 0.61% annual yield in the case of Apple, you're going to be receiving one fourth of that amount every three months. Now, let's look at the quarterly amount paid, and this gets a little less confusing. If we click through the historical data tab on Yahoo and change it here to show dividends only, we can see that all the dividends paid by the company. We see that Apple just increased its dividend to 23 cents a share in May, and, and since companies rarely cut their dividend once it's increased, that's the amount that you're going to receive per share every three months. So if we take that 23 cents per share dividend payment and then get that every three months or four times a year, we're going to receive 92 cents a share over the next year. Now that divided by the current stock price gives us that 0.61% dividend yield. I want to show you one more example here and then reveal how a falling stock price can trick dividend investors. Here we see shares of Coca-Cola, ticker KO, arguably one of the most popular dividend stocks, pays a dividend of $1.76 and a dividend yield of 2.83% on its shares, now at about $62.50 each. Now we can click through to see that dividend information here again and confirm that every three months, Coke pays a $0.44 cents per share dividend, so 
every year that amounts to $1.76 per share. Take that $1.76 divided by the current share price and you get that 2.83% yield return on an annual basis. So I've warned you about some of those high dividend yield stocks and we're gonna talk more about that later, but, but then what is a good dividend yield? What's the perfect number that balances that shareholder cash return and still being able to reinvest enough to grow the company? Here we can get some perspective by looking at the market average, the Spider S&P 500 ETF, that's the ticker SPY that tracks the market index pays a dividend just over 1.5% a year. Now a lot of the stocks in the overall market don't pay a dividend, so if we look at just dividend stocks within the Schwab US Dividend ETF, that's ticker SCHD, we see stocks in that fund pay an average 3.4% dividend yield. So then looking at dividend stocks, anything around 3% is going to be right around average, and anything above 4 to 5% is really good. But here we also need to remember that more isn't always better. For example, researching for a dividend stock video last month, I found the highest total return dividend stock was not the one with the highest yield. Aries Management, ticker ARES, has produced a 285% total return over the last five years. That's 30% a year, but, but the dividend yield here is only 4.5%. It's not bad, but not even close to some of those high yield stocks you can find. In fact, another stock, MFA Financial, one of the highest yielding dividend stocks with a 15.6% yield has destroyed investor value over the last five years. Even as investors have collected $11.70 in dividends, the share price has plunged 68% from $35.12 to just $11 per share and the dividends have been cut from 80 cents to just 44 cents each. And that is the real danger of chasing these high dividend yield stocks. If you had invested in MFA five years ago on what was then a 9.1% yield, that's the 80 cents per share quarterly dividend divided by that $35.12 per share, you'd be shit out of luck today. You would now be collecting that current 44 cents per share dividend each quarter or, or $1.76 a year for a yield of just 5% on what you paid for the shares and the value of those shares has been cut in more than half. And this is why whenever you're looking for dividend stocks, you need to be looking also for a history of dividend increases and a rising share price. I'm gonna show you how to calculate your dividends and exactly when you get paid next, but first I wanna personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for that sign up link below. One of the most frequent questions I get about dividend stocks is how to calculate dividends, and not the yield, but the actual payment amount, how much the company pays, and how much you're gonna get. Now you can always look at how much the dividend stock has paid in the past by looking at that dividend history on Yahoo Finance. Again, that's here in the historical data tab and shows all the dividend payments made. Remember, that's per share amount. So for every share of stock that you own, you're gonna receive that dividend amount. Using Apple as an example again, if the company pays a dividend of 23 cents a share every three months and you own 100 shares, then you're gonna get $23 deposited into your investment account. And if the company increases its dividend to 25 cents a share, then you're gonna get that new amount times the number of shares. And you can also find the dividend amount you'll get by using that dividend yield. If you see that Apple pays a 0.61% yield, then times that by the stock price of 149.50 is 91 cents a share. Now remember, that's a yearly amount, so you have to divide that by four to find out how much you're gonna get per share every three months. Now that you know how much you're gonna get, you're probably thinking, okay, so when are dividends paid? Where's my money, man? Whether they pay monthly or quarterly, companies pay dividends on an extremely consistent basis. You see here in Apple dividends paid back to 2018, the company always goes ex-dividend in the first week of February, May, August, and November. Investors love that kind of consistency, knowing when a company is going to pay its dividends, and companies try to keep to that schedule. Not only does that help investors plan and pay their bills with the cash flow from dividends, but, but it also sets up for a lot of great dividend investing strategies, like the 12 stock portfolio I highlighted last month that's going to pay you every single week. So look for that link in the description below. Now, the actual process companies use to pay their dividends is pretty straightforward. The board of directors will figure out how much cash the company wants to return to investors and then sets a per share dividend. In this, what's called the declaration date, they're also going to set the day for the next date, that X dividend. Now the X dividend date is the most important date for investors. Now, this is the first day the stock trades without the dividend. I'm going to say that again because it means you'll either get the dividend or you won't. 
the ex-dividend date is the first day that investors buying that stock will not get the dividend. So, so if you want that coming dividend payment, you need to buy the shares before that day. Now, of course, even if you do wait, you're still gonna get all the dividends declared in the future if you still own that stock, but you just won't get this current upcoming dividend if you buy the shares on or after the ex-dividend date. Now, that ex-dividend date is usually about 30 days after the declaration, so, so investors always know who is about to pay their dividend on a stock. In fact, a lot of investors will buy the stock before the ex-dividend date just to collect that dividend. It takes a couple of days to record all the investors that own the stock on the day before the ex-dividend date and should get that dividend, so this is followed by the date of record. It's not really a day that means anything, just, just internal accounting for that dividend. And finally, payment usually goes out on about 10 days after that record date, and you can expect it to hit your investing account to show that dividend within a few days after that. Click on the video to the right for that dividend portfolio that pays you every week. 12 dividend stocks that will put cash in your pocket every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.